the, the baseline is that we are socially connected and the absence of that connection, it, it kind of increases our threat system and our threat level, which makes a lot of sense, I think, of what we're learning in social psychology. And so there, I feel like there is this kind of shift that's happening from the evolutionary perspective of, of how we actually are designed. You know, we, we are, we did evolve as social animals. And so um, I think in many ways we're, we're wired to have that connection and dependence on others. And so when we don't, that's, um, you know, causes many problems. If that acceptance is there, then because of that acceptance, we have automatically a neutral perspective. Automatically, we can just observe instead of engaging. So it's a kind of, you're balancing the mind in a way, you know, you can call it uh, to re-pattern the mind, as, as Wendy likes to use that term. So it's a similar way. We, we just be convinced about the faults of the structural emotion and the benefits of its antidote, and then the transformation happens. The next time an irritation comes, you be alert because the acceptance is there. Because of that alertness, you be more in control and you can analyze, do I follow this or not? Based on your previous kind of contemplations on the faults of, a, of, of destructive emotion anger and the benefit of practicing patience. And then because of that analytical approach you've done on a regular basis when you're not angry, then at the time irritation comes in the first moments of that, you can still make a decision before it's too late, before the emotional hijack sets in, so to say. So we still have that freedom before that happens. And so mindfulness, where they just learn that experiences are transient and you know you can have positive experience, you can have negative experience, as long as there is no identification or self-reference in the term that I use, there is no problem. You know, if you see a cloud as a transitory <laughs> event through the sky and you haven't lost the sight of the sky, no matter how many clouds are there, you still know the sun is shining. Even though compassion wasn't taught and it's not taught as part of MBCT, the mechanism of change is and reduction in depressive symptoms is the increase in self-compassion, which then translates to compassion for others. So this is very interesting to me. So that it's like two sides of the coin. You know, if you, if you can see your experiences as transitory, if you have this clarity, that wisdom, then the affective component of it, which we can refer to as compassion, naturally arises. I would say the antidotes for the destructive emotions are the fruits that come from the practice of meditation. So it's a self-healing process. The healing is within ourselves if we allow the right conditions uh, to, to develop. And of course, if we stay with the practice, there's no alternative but to, uh, to stay with and have a regular practice. And then I think we can see that we actually have a very broad palette of colors, to paint this painting uh, of, of different uh, methods and treatments that we should use wisely. And that's where, you know, to be in touch with a wise guide and a, a caring community uh, is really important, I think, for healing ourselves or being healed of these destructive emotions over time. Um, and to find the self-healing that as the real source of transformation. 